starting in the University of Massachusetts and creating my uh, company, Computerized Biomechanical Analysis System, we developed a few patents. One of them was the, the air shoes, which brought us a tremendous amount of uh, royalties, which enabled us to go to California and start our dream research center, which was called the Koto Research Center. Here it is in uh, construction. And uh, we built it for about one year. We thought it would be two million, but it came up to about five million dollars of expenses. And here you see the finished product the most advanced uh, uh, sport research center in the world with the most uh, modern equipment. Uh, at that time, there was no PC yet. It's prior to 1980. And uh, you see it here also. We built a, a big swimming pool for Olympic swimming. Uh, Dr. Ann Penny and myself uh, plan all the required uh, equipment and the fields. As you see here, the grid on the tennis courts and the volume calibrations for the biomechanical analysis all was done. We were taking also film from the, from the top and from the sides. Here you say installing the force platforms in front of the center. And you see the multi-million dollar computer that we bought with our uh, royalty money. Uh, in the Megatech uh, graphic system, a 3D graphic system that uh, enable us and our wonderful staff to program it and uh, create probably the most uh, sophisticated uh, uh, sports science center in the world. Here are sophisticated exercise equipment we developed. Here is a visual system that we, we tested. And uh, here we're working with the archery on the force platform, including EMG. Here you see we're working on tennis racket and you can see the EMG electrodes to see uh, which muscle involved in different racket type. We have a multi-million dollar contract with Wilson Sporting Goods. And the athletes said uh, the benefit out of it. They didn't have to pay. They come here and train against the top. Here is Ben Plaknet, a world record holder in the discus at the time. Exercise the women volleyball team. We basically adapted them and they stay with us for eight years. Uh, we had the cardiovascular equipment measuring oxygen consumption and many more. Coda de Casa. A coastal valley an hour's drive south of Los Angeles, California, is the home of a unique sports research center, which is headed by psychologist Vic Braden and computer biomechanics pioneer, Dr. Gideon Ariel. Dr. Ariel, what is biomechanics? Well, literally, basically, it's what the words say. Bio means life. Mechanics mean the science of motions, the science of stresses. So what we try to do is actually we combining life with the physical laws that are affecting life. And that's where the world comes, biomechanics, the science of motions as related to biological system. Whatever happened in athletics, how far the shot go, how far the discus go, how far the high jumper go, it all depends on how much forces were produced to be able the object to move. And the object could be the human body. Or could be a shot, could be a javelin, could be a discus, could be a hammer, could be a frisbee. We cannot see the forces, but we can calculate the forces. When we're talking about biomechanics, we're talking about calculations of kinetic parameters or the forces that are acting upon the body. We're utilizing a high-speed film using photography. Now, after we develop the film, we can utilize an instrument which is called a digitizer. You actually see the picture projected on the digitizer. What we are doing, we're using a sonic pen to trace the joint center of the athlete and this joint center locations going right to the computer. Now, at the past, people did it by hand. It took months and months to do one analysis. What the computer does, it takes the X and Y coordinates from the digitizers and put it into a memory. After we did the digitizing process, which takes sometime hour, hour and a half to trace about 100 frames, each frame separately, we can reconstruct the pictures on the screen of the Megatech graphic system. The data is processed by the computer and it gives us the following thing, the displacement, how much the joint center moves. From that we can derive the velocities or how fast or the speed of the segment. From that we can derive the acceleration and acceleration is very important because the second Newton law said that force equal to 
mass times acceleration. If we know the mass of the different body parts, and if we know the acceleration from this technique, we can calculate the forces. And what makes an athlete move is actually rely on forces. The pattern of the movement, or the acceleration pattern, in each sequence is critical in understanding of the proper movement. After we interpret the results of the athlete, we might make some changes, and then a week later, or two weeks later, we retest him again and see if he corrects his technique. This is the non-direct measurement. The uniqueness in this technique is that it's non-invasive. We don't touch the athlete while we're taking the film. That's why the athlete can perform in the Olympic Games or in our Koto Sport Research Center, and he even doesn't know when we're taking the film, and then we analyze it. The direct method consists of a force measurement device that records the forces directly. It gives us the three orthogonal forces. This is a direct measurement. It's very important, for example, for a runner. How much shock he transfers into his body? For example, comparison between shoes can reveal to us immediately the data if there is any difference in force transmission to the body. Also, how can we construct better shoes? Or how can we design shoes for a particular athlete so he can perform in the Olympic Games better? Dr. Ariel, how factual are the results of your calculations? Well, it's as factual as gravitational laws. Uh, very, it's like when somebody said that I left the shot put and it fell down. Uh, very seldom I hear somebody say I left the shot put and fell up. It's, it's a physical loss. It cannot fall up unless you are in the moon. So if we're finding out that there is some kind of a linkage here that translates momentum from one segment to the other, it couldn't be it will be any different. Also, I used to tell the shot putters, the shot putters say, yeah, but what about the psychology? And I say, well, I don't know yet the shot putter that threw the shot, the shot just left the hand and then he concentrate and suddenly zoom, it went five feet farther. I never saw that. If it ever happened, it always happened when it was still in contact with the fingers and when the forces were transmitted through the dynamic link into the shot from the hand. All this concentration and all this shouting and all this jumping after the shot left the hand, this is a... This is just impression on the audience. The, the shot is going to land where it's supposed to land. So in order to summarize the whole system, utilizing the Megatech graphic system, the data general computer, the Talos digitizing system, we can bring athletes to our Koto Sport Research Center, running analysis on them the first two days, run for two more weeks of training, retest them, see the changes, recorrect them again, and later in two weeks again we follow up with another analysis, and I am assure you, we will have progress. So this was an unbelievable dream. Uh, the women volleyball team got the silver medal in 84 games, we had the, the Troyers here and other events here as Brian Oldfield. We had a t t fantastic social interaction between all the athletes. And you see here uh, Danny Sauer with the computerized access machine with Ben Plaknet on the bench. Here is a Mike Powell, former world record holder, and Brian Oldfield. They would be here all the time. Here is Brian Oldfield trying to overcome uh, uh, the particular force. And we had a fantastic social interaction, uh, fantastic dinners, and... The Koto Research Center was uh, the, the light bright of my life uh, to be continuing the next uh, episode.